you for joining me for another uh, great interview. I'm here speaking with a uh, composer, uh, arranger, music editor extraordinaire, Sebastian Zuleta, who has uh, worked with so many amazing composers, such as Hans Zimmer, Heitor Ferreira, Henry Jackman, Toby Chu, so many others, and also, of course, composes and does music on his own. Uh, Sebastian, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. How are you doing? Good, Kaya. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, a lot of fun to be here, for sure. Absolutely. So um, to to start off, I would love to just kind of uh, get a sense of your background, like talk about growing up as a child and when did kind of this world of music enter your life and how did it evolve into a career? Well, I grew up in Colombia. I was born and raised in Colombia. And since I can remember, I, you know, love music. And I, I have this image in my head of like being like, I don't know, five years old without seeing an orchestra play live and just like standing on the aisle, just like conducting or trying to <laughs> imitate the conductor. Uh, but uh, I, and I started studying early on, but I kind of like went away. And then around, I think like 12, I picked it up again, started playing in different bands. I never thought it would turn into what I'm doing right now, uh, to be honest. Like I didn't really see a future. I didn't even know that you could be a composer uh, growing up in Colombia and, and thinking like, oh, I could be here. But like uh, slowly I found my way I wanted to pursue more like engineering and recording and music production and I went to Full Sail and when I was there I met a lot of people in the film uh, like um, program and they were like hey can you do music for our short films or for this project and I'm like sure I'll, I'll do it and then it's kind of like started falling in love uh, of just music and film um, and and yeah just started pursuing that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's amazing. And uh, given the fact that you came from Colombia and, and relocated here. So I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, being somebody who immigrated to the United States, if there are any young composers out there who may be in different countries and are looking to do it, do you have any tips for young composers of what was that like for you? Was it stressful kind of leaving your home country and coming here? And what was that kind of experience like? Um, to be honest, I mean, I'm sure there were like uh, stressful moments. And I think one of the big ones is like visa and trying to find a way to do it properly and, and coming here to get the opportunities. But I, if, if I look back, I was just like so focused on, on looking forward and just trying to find opportunities and trying to, yeah, get my foot in the door and, and just work really, really hard to, to get here. So I think what I would say is just really dream big and 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 go for it you know like i i'm sure there were a lot of like moments where i thought it was not possible and even moments where i was like what am i doing here all my family's back home uh i miss like my friends and the food and just like uh everything and and um and yeah so like should i go back should i not but but uh, when i got a chance to or whenever I got the opportunity to like go to scoring stage and see live players or just be able to tell stories to music. I was like, well, this is what I want to do. And it's definitely worth uh, staying here and make my life here. So um, yeah. basically that's, that's, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and, you, and you've got to work with so many amazing uh, composers. And uh, so talk about getting your kind of a foot in the door. What were kind of the first jobs you got? And I know you worked, I think, with Haytor very early on and, and became yeah. a, an arranger and editor. And so talk about kind of growing in that and getting your foot in the door in the industry. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I like I said, when I was in, in, in college, I, I found found out about, you know, film music and, and I was like, all right, I, I want to pursue that. And, and so early on from like career development in school, I was like, I want to pursue this. And they helped me and I got an internship. I was living in Florida at the time. I was working and, and already like doing production sound and whatever I could get. Uh, and then I got this opportunity to be an intern at uh, Hate to Repair Studio. And I basically got a call like on a Thursday and I'm like, all right, I'll fly over the weekend and I'll be there on Monday. So it was just like, I, I knew I needed to take it. I, all my family supported me. And and uh, and so that's how it started. I, I started that as uh, as an intern at Hate Tours at Remote Control. And then I um, I moved out into like his assistant and I, I was there for nearly four years working with him. And Basically, I, I see it as a, like a master's degree in film scoring where I got to see how Hater did it, but also I know like collaborations with Hans and Harry Gregson Williams and Henry Jackman. And I mean, yeah, it just basically like getting getting all the information and just being a sponge and, and learning all, all the knowledge that was there and every, how they, all the process and how they did everything for, yeah, just to, to pick it up and, and continue going on my own. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone I talk to says that's like the biggest crash course and just like in yep. the industry and how everything is. So, um, so, you know, you, you were, you served as music, you do, you compose, but you also, you know, you're a music editor and you served as music editor for uh, Wu-Tang and American Saga, which is the, the hit series on Hulu. So before we jump into that, I was wondering if you could just give a definition for anybody of what a music editor is 
And if you had to write it like a job description of what your job is as a music editor, what would that be? I, I would, I mean, there's a lot of like many detailed things that we can go into, but I think ultimately is basically just the person that sometimes starts as early as even before production, sometimes when you like pre-production, like pre-produced tracks or for playback and things like that, but mostly uh, from temping when, when the, um, carrying the music and the baton from temping and coming up and helping the director uh, find ideas all the way to working with the composer and, and serving as a, like the bridge between uh, like editorial director and the composer and just being uh, uh, part of the team that carries the music all the way to the, to the um, final dub where a lot of the final changes in music sometimes like just on the go really quickly we need to fix things or or just maybe take music out or come up with new cues in, in some places and, and just track some things from the score that's already been written. Um, and yeah, basically just, I think just kind of like seeing the process through to make sure that the director's vision and the composer is accomplished and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people don't realize how integral I think a, a great music editor is to have just like a director needs a great picture editor music editing is just as important. Um, so talk about uh, working on Wu-Tang and I mean, it must've been a, a daunting project to, to tackle. I mean, you have Riza as a co-creator and involved all the, the members are consulting producers. Um, what was it like uh, getting this project and what were kind of the first conversations about what needed, what a music, what the music editor needed to do for this, uh, for this show? Well, I mean, I, I remember getting the call. I was like, hey, there's a possibility of, of, of this project. And, and I remember interviewing with, with Riza and with Alex, a, uh, also a producer. Um, and, and it was first great meeting them. I, I think they're awesome. And, and I was just very excited. I, I didn't, I, growing up in Columbia, I wasn't very familiar with their music, uh, but I just, just dove in and watched the first season and, and just like fell in love with their story and how powerful it was. And I mean, life changing and how, how they turned everything around. So it was very inspiring. And then also a, a show about music it was, it was the opportunity to explore different things that maybe other shows really don't. Um, so, I mean, early on, it's just basically getting more familiar with, with, with the music and, and with the score from the first season. We, we of course, had the library from the first season that, that some of the editors were already tracking or we could already track ideas. Uh, but I think it was basically the, the first episode just getting really familiar with Riz's process and, and his team and, and working closely with them. But um, like, like I said earlier, like a, as a music editor, just basically seeing everything through, making sure that there's nothing falling through the cracks, uh, wherever uh, music needs to be, songs, of course, there's a lot of songs, uh, working closer with Mary Ramos, our, our music supervisor, and uh, King Tech also was, was, you know, was great. He was already, already produced tracks for playback and recreating a lot of the, the songs. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think one of the, the most fun things to, uh, about it was um, seeing the process in the second season, which I love, gets more into the music, uh, and because the first season is more like, like like their backstory and how they they turn into what Wu Tang would be. But this new season, uh, season two, is about them really getting into music and, and producing and creating the tracks that got them notoriety and they think got got them uh, just their showcase to the world and 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 really their start. So yeah. It, it was... yeah, I mean, yeah, the fact that you're dealing with not just a because for people who don't know, maybe you haven't seen this, the series. It's a dramatic. Uh, it's a it's a it's a, a television series. It's not a it's not a, a documentary, but it's a you know their story you know told through you know dramatization. It's a drama, but um, featuring all their music and talk about um, you know you're creating music that's diegetically in the wor world that we're hearing their songs and the creation of their songs and of course live performances. So I'm curious about making those scenes work with the live performances and, and working with the sound effects team and kind of making the just kind of the soundscape of the world come to life? Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a great question. One of the things that I love the most about, about the show is there were a few uh, episodes, I think it was episode eight, where they have a performance in the theater, which is like basically 10 minutes, they perform three songs where they on set, they had playback and, 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 and pre-records so they could lip sync. But how do you turn that into something that feels like real, like they're performing and, it, and it's, you know, uh, engaging to the audience. Uh, so definitely it was a lot of, uh, you know, there, we already had the, the, the songs placed, but it was a lot of like maybe re-recording the vocals. So getting in touch and, and working closely with the, with the sound team with Tom DeGordo, our, our, our sound supervisor. And, and he would uh, re-record some of the vocals, but then also 
uh, as you know, like the live shows, there was all this ad libs and like supporting like certain phrases and certain lines in the song, and uh, and then just the crowds and 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 all. And also, I think ultimately, what when everything came together in the final dub with Rick Ash, our, our sound mixer, uh, is just making sure that every, all the pieces were right uh, and and were you know of course lip sync was right, spot on, but but then also it basically we just wanted to put the audience in in like if they were there in the concert and um, and I, I yeah I think just recreating that was great and and we had also King Tech who was there to i mean not only work with the music but also make sure that everything was feeling real and i mean he grew up on on the west uh, coast too but he lived through all, a, a lot of this and he like he was like yeah we were there and he would like would tell his own stories about like yeah that's where we were and yeah this is how it could sound and and giving us tips on how to make it more real which was it was a treat yeah, I mean, just that process must have been amazing. I mean, to create, I don't think people realize how much work goes into, especially when you have a live performance in a show or a film, just all the little details and that have to come together to make it feel authentic, where you're not even thinking about it, that you are watching a dramatization of, you know, of a film or something. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I remember, like, getting from from the sound team, like, all the takes, just, we had, like, different takes for each each uh, character. And I mean, sometimes like 50 tracks with just like different takes and like picking takes of like, oh, when, when they're supporting, when they're just ad-libbing, when they're doing this and just kind of like coming with a, a comp of like basically 10 minutes straight of them just performing um, and, and, and then getting to the dub stage and tweaking even more. And I even like uh, after playback, like getting notes from, from, from tech and then sitting with him and just nudging things like samples one way, samples the other, just like making sure everything was spot on. Um, to, to, to make it as, as real as, as we could. Absolutely. And uh, so the film also, I mean, the show also depicts um, kind of Rizzo's creative process and coming up with, with the songs and the writing process and how he interprets music and kind of telling that side of his story. So talk about creating those scenes and, and what it's like to show, I guess, the, the songs that people know and love and maybe how they come to life and what that involved with you. Yeah, that, that was also another treat and, and one part that I loved. And like, I think episodes uh, two, maybe three uh, and five start getting more into like slowly into his creative process. Maybe he's like sampling something and you could hear like what would become uh, Cream or what would become like another track that's like, uh, that's very known well now. Uh, but then when we get to episode six, it's all focused around Protect Your Neck, which is like the one of the songs that basically just Put them on the map and exploded and and so for this one what what we had was from pre-records they did two versions of the song and so the first one was like uh uh the first beat or of how his process was and and in the episode it was very cool because we see him like pick out records from record stores and trying to find inspiration and to sample and and do all this and then once you get like home we actually see him there putting uh like the records in and we what's very cool is like how do we recreate? And they did a wonderful job visually where we like zoom in and go into his head and it's this black box. Uh, but then musically, like in the black box, we could see the players of, of, of uh, one of the tracks, like a drummer, bass, guitar, all that. And then he has a console next to him and, and how like he would like be able to mute the different instruments and kind of like as musicians, we can focus just, even when we're listening to a full mix, we can just listen to the bass or listen to the guitar or listen to the different elements. So it's kind of like recreating that uh, visually and sonically for the audience, which I, I thought like I, would, I never got to do this in a show and I was very excited about it. Um, and then, so like how, it was great to see how for this first track, they had like, even if it was the same lyrics of the other song, they had, he could come, came up with a different beat uh, using two different um, records and, and kind of like mixing them together and then actually eventually going to the, to, the, to the recording studio to put some vocals down and everything. But then he like seeing how uh, focus is and how his vision is like, this is where I want to get to. Um, like how he goes in and like, I, I need to change the beat and how he goes back and starts working again. And, and there's a moment where you could see there's just basically like chaos in his head. Like there's all these like uh, different verses and different things happening, but then also, um, like the different tracks as he's combining, also playing in the same room and, and until he like focuses in, in like what he needs to get to and what eventually becomes Protect Your Neck, which is, yeah, it's just, 
it's, it's one of their most well-known tracks. Yeah, absolutely. And, and talk about, I mean, was that uh, challenging to, uh, I mean, I'm sure, did you work close with Razan? Because I think he serves as a composer on the show as well. And talk about working with him and was it nerve wracking to get the first feedback from him to say, oh, this is and taking notes from him and figuring things out. Was that a fun process or was it challenging to, to try to match what was in his head, who the person who lived through this and kind of, you know, this is like his story, their story. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I think, uh, no, it, it was, of course, like, I was, like, nervous and playing things for him, like, for the first time and throughout, but, but uh, no, I think he, he was, he definitely knew what he wanted, and when something wasn't working, he was very clear on, on giving the direction, and he also has a great team that has been working with him for a while. Uh, Joe Picard is a wonderful, and I was all constantly talking to him, um, and um, so, yeah, I, I think it was, it was very clear. What well, was very, uh, um, grades and, and, I, and I love this whenever I got like score from him I, I you know I would place in it place it in and, and kind of like put it together to maybe go to the dub stage or, or present for the producers the other producers um, but I always was very surprised at, as how the music changed and episode each episode was truly different uh, and had different focuses but for example episode four was all, all everything happens on a boat on a, on a ferry going from Staten Island to Manhattan and it's all the music is not it's not like so much like hip hop or influence. It's, it, everything was like uh, spaghetti western, like any more funny, like so different. It was just That's so amazing. cool to see that come in and, and see Riza do that that which he's done so well before too. But like and for this show, is it was it was uh, just great seeing like all these different uh, colors and, and combinations where you think like oh maybe that would never go together in my head, but then he puts it together and it's just like it it works and it's brilliant. Um, so yeah, yeah. very very inspiring well, i mean congratulations it must have been such a rewarding experience to to go through that and 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 kind of flesh out this world and especially bring to life music that everybody is very familiar with i'm sure it was a daunting task but i mean such an amazing job some amazing work there <laughs> <laughs> yep yep for sure so yeah and so you also worked on uh the upcoming uh, uh apple tv plus film uh, finch uh, starring tom hanks uh composed by gustavo Santolaja. So talk about this is a you know completely a different composer, very, very different, different uh, world, yeah. completely different on the other end of the spectrum. But um, and I and I've, I know Gustavo and and I've interviewed him and he's you know very unconventional with his process and he's very specific and and so talk about the differences there and working as a music editor on this project and what it required uh, from you. Yeah, this one what I loved was getting involved early on. I came in to start working on the director's cut, uh, so I was working with Miguel Sapochnik and with uh, Tim uh, Porter, and uh, and it was just great to to basically just start early on. Uh, they, Tim has already cut in some pieces of music, but there was a lot of it that they didn't have music, so it was an opportunity to just work closely with with our director and 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 just get find the palette, find different things. And what was even be better, the Gustavo had already written uh, like a lot of music for, for it and just to, to the script and just inspiration. And, and um, so I, they passed it all along to me and I was like just placing ideas and working things. And, and um, so, yeah, what I, what I loved about this one was just working throughout the process and being from early on, seeing all the different iterations of the film, uh, and like for different previews and, and, and how each scene and how things change and why decisions were made to maybe cut things out or, or keep them or arrange them differently. And the magic of, edit, of picture editing is, is yeah. awesome. Like seeing how like coming up with scenes that really never existed, but they found a clever way of just putting it together and you would never know that it wasn't meant to be that way, but it just enhances and, and, and just takes the story to another level. Um, so yeah, I think just, being able to work work with Gustavo, which I love his music, even from Colombia. I mean, knowing him from like Bajo Fondo and like from other yes. things, not related to 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 film scores, but then loving his his film scores as well, which is a, a dream come true for me. Um, so yeah, yeah I love I love his because the process. I think it's not it's not like other you know he loves to like right away from the picture, and I know a lot of composers there's a few that love to do that. So you get to kind of get the, the the genesis of his inspiration and then find it and match it and you know fit it with the film i think that's such a such an interesting process <laughs> yeah and, and for a music editor is is, is a gift too because you're like hey here are the all the all the pieces now go and like put them together and, right. and, and play like I, I i find that a lot of it and i love puzzles so it feels like sudoku with music you know just like <laughs> 
together and like, oh, it works, it doesn't work. And, and it's amazing just how, how much music can influence not only like playing a, finding a piece, but like shifting it one second either way. And it just maybe even tells a different story or hits different moments. So being able to play with that with music that ultimately could or ended up in the movie is, is, just, is just great. And then for this one, um, I think it was uh, maybe different from, from other, I, I haven't worked with him before, but maybe from other, other scores, there were some scenes that he wrote to picture, which was also really cool to see. Wow, yeah. And he like sat down and, and I mean, not only was writing away from picture and, and coming up with his beautiful melodies and his sensibilities, but also actually sitting down and, and scoring. And, and that, was, that was great too, just uh, seeing like how that, for certain scenes that, scenes that needed it, he would just be able to just you know just do it that way too yeah absolutely and and i feel like working in this job i mean talk about how i mean how does this working as a music editor and an arranger uh uh does it help you build skills for your own uh, music i know you you compose films you also do stuff away from from picture stage pr productions and symphonies and or and musicals and so does that help flesh out your skills as a composer on your own to help uh, kind of bring your own voice out Definitely, definitely. I think they really go hand in hand. I, I, I was very surprised. I mean, it, now that I think back, maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was like, oh, actually, being a music editor just uh, gives me more tools to become a better composer and a better musician overall. Just uh, being able to, you know, even just see, practice putting music to picture in so many different ways and being much faster where I can take like a day or two days or a week to write a cue and then seeing it to picture, I, I could have cut like I know 20 different versions already with other things and maybe seeing what is working and what moments I should be or the music should be hitting or where it's important to have music come in so I think all of that comes in handy and it's also the other way around being a composer right. uh, uh, bringing a lot of the tools that I use as a composer to music editing and I mean even when temping I I like I need to bridge two cues and like I'll just write something there so I can just like feel it makes it make it feel seamless or or maybe there's a cue that's working, but it's missing some elements. I can just like layer things on top that I, I can come up with, just load up contact or something and just like write something over it that that uh, for the temp process is very helpful. Um, yeah, absolutely. And um, so on your solo work, now that you've, you, you've juggled so many different hats, do you like to have a, a music editor for yourself? Do you like to have a team or do you like, well, I can do all of this and I, and I know it in my head or do you just try to, or is it a curse? Do directors and producers go, well, I know you can do everything, so just do it all. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think um, it would be great to have a team. I think right now, like, um, uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, I think getting help would be, will be good. Uh, <laughs> but but it, it's, it's, I think it, it is good to be able to do, to do, like, to, to kind of, like, cover a lot of the, a lot of the ground and, and, yeah, I don't know, but definitely would be nice to, to, to have a, a bigger team at times um and and yeah just, i know they're always they're always trying to find a way to cut cut budgets in the music department so if they if you can wear multiple hats they're going to make you do everything <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it, even i, I think as, as part of my like process when i'm scoring something i sometimes especially when i'm uh working early on like coming up with ideas like i would sometimes like play with like temp my own my own uh picture yeah. sometimes like not, not but like i said not to oh just to get ideas of maybe what works and what doesn't really quickly and not really have to like play and, and and write a lot of a lot of the music but already get information from it and and not like risk temple because i can just like replace it immediately or just try things but um but that's good and and also like for the products that I, th there's a, a film that um just finished and is right now doing like festival rounds and all that but for that one um it's called unidentified objects and i uh, i started writing like basically when, when I got the scripts and there was a lot of synth, so I was learning new instruments. So that was also kind of like similar to like the process with Gustavo and Finch is just that having a lot of music and I send the director and the editor a huge library of like, not only um, music, but also sound effects that ended up in the film. And, and I thought that was, it's always fun. Like you write something that maybe you didn't need for that or just playing around and finding inspiration and then all of a sudden you watch the film and you see like something plays that works. It's, it's very rewarding. It's like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah, but they, yeah. they like it and it's working with the story. So, and you touched on some I mean, talking about temp editing and, and creating a temp track and uh, a temp score. And I know that temp music has a you know kind of a hate or, or love. I think mostly hate. I think in the, in the industry, composers seem to not fall in love with the temp or hate that when uh, directors fall in love with the temp. But I think a temp track 
can be one of the most important tools in building out the, as you mentioned, the palette, finding the sound, finding the flow for the editor, the picture editing as well. So uh, talk, talk to about that. What do you feel the purpose of the temp is and, and do you believe in the temp? And when is the temp gets maybe in the way? And how do you kind of prevent that as a music editor from not trying to overshadow what the composer is gonna do? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, it, it, I, I like working with temp. I mean, not uh, as a composer, I think the temp, like you said, it, it can be a, a very, very good tool to yes, just yeah. get, inform ourselves and the, or like everyone, like director and, and editor and, and the composer, just like what's working, what isn't. I, I, I do find like whenever there's temp love and there's something where like, I, I hate when, when there's something like, I'll oh, just copy the temp because we know that happens. And, and yeah. that's very yeah. unfortunate. Ad, like sometimes like budget or just time we're like we need to get it done for like now so this is what we know works but uh i mean one one way that i i i try to get away with it uh, away from it like if there is a risk of, of temp love is, is just um just really talking and, and trying to break it down with the with the director and having mm -hmm. a nice conversation of like maybe what is working about this that that we can come up with our own because one thing that as composers we do have going for ourselves is that we for, hopefully we've created a palette and, and something that feels unique for the film. And, and so temp, I mean, a temp can work for a scene, but overall it might not be like, it might not fit in as, as maybe like an original score or we can have uh, memorable uh, melodies that we can just bring in. So that, that, that to me is, is something that, that I try to use and, and um, as, as well, just to, to have like an upper hand and be able to beat the temp, yeah. uh, but but um, I, I I work with with composers that really don't want to listen to it and right. and, um, and just like maybe they watch it once and then turn it off. Um, yeah, no, but, it happened because I I talked to John Powell and and now it was funny on camera. I think that I did a director composer interview and Dean revealed that they had a secret temp that they kept from from him. They didn't show it to him because he they knew John wouldn't hate it. But he's like, no, we used this, you know for our purposes, but we didn't push it on the composer yeah so yeah yeah and and i mean i think that's fine because it it when that happens too it's, it's, i think it, especially when there's more time to explore mm -hmm. uh and and you you can just like either write suites and that's another that's actually another way to to get away from it is like if you write something before and you already temp with the music that that's yes. been yeah. written for the for the project then then you get away from that temp love because like we love that temp well it's already ours so yeah. let's use it you know uh, but but uh, but yeah, when when there whenever there's a chance to really have an, an, a conversation about music, and and that's something that I, I really appreciate when when there's a chance to to have a spotting session where we can even just watch the film without music or watch yeah. it twice, like each scene, like with with and without music, and really get into it because sometimes um, when and I see this coming in early in the process is there's a lot of uh, sound effects are not final i mean they're still a work in progress dialogues maybe not great and there's maybe the, the movie's a lot longer than than what it will end up being so there's like put music in a lot of places and sometimes the music the, the film just becomes this long so all the music stays like like just gets put together and, and now we yeah. have like lots of music but then if you take a step back and maybe turn off the music you'll realize and if there's an uh like hopefully a, a space for that conversation of like let's re like think where music should be uh, and and where it shouldn't, and and even if the temp is like going wall to wall, like can we turn off now that we have like a better sounds, like fine, like closer to final and a better mix, and and actually see the cut for what it is right now and reevaluate that. So when I, I always try to do that, just so um, it it like music should be there to really just support the movie and not get in the way um, of it. Um, and, exactly. And yeah. Because it was. Oh, this is what we've been doing for the last two months and we got used to it like can we we think to make it better and and i i do believe that and i i, I have experience in it and it usually does and even like in at, at the final dub where the final effects and everything is is comes together now it's like well we don't need music there so then as a music guy i'm like all right how do i get out of this and, and come back in without it and make making sure it sounds musical and 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 that um, no one would notice that there was music in that scene that we truly didn't need it. So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 such a you know it's it's such a process. I love the process of it. I mean, experimenting and finding what works, throwing stuff up, taking stuff away, and and I, I love how you put it in that. Uh, just finding that process and having those conversations, which I think more people should have. 
and make it a collaborative effort. And I think uh, better the effect uh, serving the film is always a purpose. And that's what I think is, yeah, yes. that's per yeah. perfectly worded. <laughs> yeah, um, no, we're, yeah, we're definitely here to serve the story and, and, the, and the vision. So that's, I think that all helps it. To, to wrap up um, uh, our, our chat here today, I just want to ask just a fun question. Uh, I love to ask and see what people uh, say to this question. It's uh, so if you could pick any other job on a TV or movie show, a movie set or TV show or in front of the camera, behind the camera, if you could just try it for a day, like what, what, what job or position would you give it a go? Not music related. <laughs> Not music related. Uh, that's a, that's a fun question. Um, I think definitely behind the camera. <laughs> Cinematography? Would you do cinematographer? Uh, cinematography sounds fun. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm between like camera operating looks fun and yeah. uh, or like, I don't know, the steady cam. I work yeah. on set and I, I think it looks so cool or like a stunt. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That, I may, that is in front of the camera, but it just like looks so cool. I have some friends that are uh, stunts and, and they're, they're just amazing. It, it's amazing. Yeah. Do. it's amazing yeah. what they do and all the training yeah. and all yeah it's, it yeah. looks like a lot of fun it looks like a lot of work but a lot of fun it was like what are you doing today it's like i'm getting training on swords and i'm like wow that's really cool. i'm falling <laughs> like their dream is like yeah my dream is to get lit on lit up on fire and i'm like you're crazy but it, it, it does look like fun maybe not that but something like that all right so no no fire but just maybe some sword fights <laughs> yeah exactly something like that but maybe I, just to go beyond your question, if I maybe not this, I would maybe be an astronaut or something. Not a really- Oh, astronaut? astronaut. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, then Finch Finch was the perfect film to work on then, you know, to tickle your, your space exploration. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, there, there should be some space exploration after Finch for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Sebastian, I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time to chat today and then letting us uh, kind of pick your head for your process. And I think, you know, music editing is such an important position, a job on a, on, a, on a film, on a show. And thanks for kind of illuminating the process for us. So thanks so much. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's great to be here and great to meet you.